This has been the craziest week ever. That is, if your name happens to be Google. It released some of the most impressive new technology in history. Wow. Had to apologize for its other not-so-good tech, and had to address rumors that were so insane people actually believe them. Whether you love Google or hate Google, there's something for everybody in this video. It is February 23rd, 2024, and you're watching The Code Report. Event 1, Gemini 1.5. Things got off to a good start. Google hit a massive high with the announcement of Gemini 1.5. I was able to use my deep state connections to get early access and what I can tell you is that this thing has got some serious riz. It's a large language model that's superior to GPT-4 on most benchmarks, but with a staggering 10 million token context window. This blows other models like Claude and GPT Turbo out of the water. Currently, people have been using Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAGStack, to help LLMs better understand custom data. This has led to tons of vector database startups, but many people have been underwhelmed by the efficacy of RAG, and these models can generally gain a better understanding of custom data from a large context context window. And it's just a far more simplified system. Like, I uploaded an entire code base from my local machine for a side project I've been working on, and then asked Gemini to start building some features on top of it. It performed way better than Copilot or any other tool I've used, and knew how to incorporate different components and libraries that exist in the project. Although it took like a full minute to complete the prompt. But another killer feature is the ability to upload long videos. I was able to upload videos from my Fireship Pro courses, and it could automatically extract code and write tutorials about these videos. Overall, it makes GPT-4 look like an antique from 2023. But that brings us to event number two, Gemma. Google announced a family of open source models that are designed to rival Meta's Llama 7B and Mistral. Based on Google's own benchmarks, which we'll take with a grain of salt, these models dominate the competition, especially when it comes to math and coding. These models are free and can be used to make money in your own apps, but there are some limitations. You have to follow the prohibited use policy, which means you can't use them to do any fun stuff. Everybody loves guardrails, but in event number three, guardrails went horribly wrong. People started noticing some weird behavior with Gemini's image generator. If you prompt it for an image of ginger people, you get a result that is both hilarious and horrifying. But it appears Gemini was designed to be so anti-racist that it paradoxically became racist. Other image generators have been criticized for a lack of melanin, and Google tried to address that with a new policy. Kill Whitey! No! but they ended up making everybody mad. The left wing was outraged seeing multiracial Nazis, while the right wing was outraged seeing multiracial founding fathers. This culminated with an apology from Google, and they temporarily suspended Gemini's ability to generate images of people. It's going to be the technical challenge of the century to make everybody happy, but this next event was a monumental achievement for web developers. For weeks now, Google has been showing this banner, talking about how it's improving its sign-in page with a modern look and feel. Well, this week we finally got the new feel, and it's mind-blowing. We went from a vertical layout to a more horizontal layout. It's hard to understate this achievement because not only do you have to center a div here in the middle, but you also have to center a form input inside of a flex row. Pulling off a change of this magnitude is no easy feat that likely involved hundreds of product managers, all of which are making like 500k a year, who are managed by multiple vice presidents making over a million a year, all just to have an intern modify some HTML. The only thing we're missing is a keynote from Sundar. But the craziest thing that happened this week was this email from the Gmail team, which explains how Gmail is being sunsetted and shut down. And in August 2024, you'll no longer be able to send, receive, or access your email. It's unbelievable that Google would shut down a product that has 1.5 billion users. I'm so mad right now, I'm literally shaking. That was everybody's reaction when they saw this email spread like wildfire on Zitter. But it was all just a prank. The email was so perfectly crafted in Google's corporate language that they had to come out and clarify that no, Gmail is not actually shutting down. It sure has been a crazy week, but that's just the way things go when you're riding the hockey stick towards the singularity. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.